unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh, Will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay. Revelation 3. Praise the Lord. And I, I've got some real um, messages that just jumped out at me. One of them is watch. So that's really what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I know uh, big uh, New Jerusalem. I'm going to have to make its own separate, you know, video um, about that one. And uh, I'm not sure about some of this other stuff. I, I'm looking at something now that he hasn't really said anything to me about it, but I'm sure I'll probably be making a, a separate video about the seven spirits of God. And so those are um, just some of the ones that are just jumping out at me that 
if the spirit allows, then, you know, we can, um, we can look at that, you know, as well. So in Revelation 3, I have written down third verse, 3-3. Three, three. So let us go look at 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Okay. It says, remember, therefore, I'm going to go up to 2. It says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Thirteen, no, three. Remember, therefore, how that how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So immediately when I read that. I thought about Matthew 24. And so let us go there. Matthew 24. And it's all the way at the bottom. Okay, so let's do, let's look at 40. 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this. That if the good man of the house had known and what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And I'm going to stop right there um, for right now, but the rest of it is really, really, really just as important, you know, too, because... Um, one of the other things that he that he's bringing to my mind, you know, right now is I have to do a video about another video. You know how I'll um, I'll put it, you know, up, but this time I'm not going to I'm going to comment after I'm going to make a comment after the video. And it has something to do with what he said to Sardis. He said that um they will remain in the book of life. He won't blot them out. So let's go and see what he said about Sardis. And in this video, this Christian is trying to say that you can't lose your salvation. This is the thing that Christianity, you know, believes instead of believing the word of God. Because the Lord has told you. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, that he's going to tell you to get away from him. <laughs> Ye who work iniquity. There's just so many verses where he is very clear about what he's going to say to those. Matthew 25, with the sheep and the goat. The, 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 the sheep are on the, the, the correct side of him, and the goats are not. And he tells the goats the same thing. In Matthew 25 that he says in Matthew 7. And then now you got Revelation. Where he said in Revelation 2, he'll snatch out your candlestick. He'll snatch it out. And now you got him saying that he'll blot you out of his book. That is very succinct to me. I don't know what Christians will have to understand to, to, to believe that he's serious about what he's saying. So that was a rant. Let us go to Revelation 3 and look at Sardis. Okay, Sardis. Okay, it's uh, verse is five. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. That's very clear. To me i don't need somebody to interpret that even when i before the holy spirit really gave brought me into this level of knowledge i understood that there was something going on with this scripture that needed understanding i mean as a child these are questions like i'm like who is he talking to and then i finally understood that answer just by asking myself that question the, the words are clear he's not joking he will blot you out it's going to be so many hurt feelings over the fact that people just don't want to tell the truth 
And that's another um, video that I'm going to share. I've listened to it up until about halfway. And so I'll um, play it up to a certain point and then um, I'll make my comment, you know, afterwards. So, yeah, these are two videos that he's already telling me that I have to do. And I'm like, I still haven't even done Revelation 3. So, here I am. <laughs> here I am to do Revelation 3. Because he he's, he's, he's giving me work to do. Amen. Okay. So, yeah. Let us um, watch and be ready in such an hour. Matthew, if you look at Matthew 25 again with the virgins. You got 10 of them. Five of them didn't make it. Because they weren't prepared. They weren't ready. So when the call came, they were somewhere else. They weren't in position so that they could, you know, maximize all the, the work and energy that has been put out, you know, down here. And he tells us to watch and beware. But when you, we, and one of the reasons why I'm mentioning these two videos that I'm going to do, you know, what Christians is. In one of them, you're going to hear a lot of hubris. You know, this is with the older dude. The, the older white dude is the one that I'm talking about. There's a younger white dude, you know, in a shorter, you know, video. But he really believes that he knows what he's talking about. And on one hand, he actually does. Like, he recognizes that there's something going on in the evangelical, you know, church. But there are very key things that he doesn't even understand himself. And when we put ourselves in a position that we're the teacher, like I keep saying, I'm not your teacher. The Holy Spirit is our teacher because I can't get anything out of the word unless I am fed by the Holy Spirit. My limited knowledge of being able to understand scripture has a cutoff point. And in order for me to see past my human level of understanding, that's when the Holy Spirit steps in and he, it just, uh, the, the words just take on a whole different meaning and hue and texture. And I'm like, oh my goodness, is that what you're talking about? It's, it's, we all have to be taught the same way. So when I listen to Christians like this older dude, it really kind of makes me sad because he really, when I listen to him, all I hear is Matthew 7, 21 through 23. And I can see that he really, he believes in what he feels like he believes, even if it's dead wrong. Very scary, very scary to me. I invite you guys to, you know, listen to that uh, video. I don't know how far I'm going to get in Revelation 3, you know, tonight. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one of those videos after I finish doing this one. Amen. So please be patient, you know, with me if I have to break up Revelation 3 in another video. But I really want to be able to, um, to tie these things, you know, together as we're talking. He's talking to the churches. This is another thing that Christians don't want to accept. These are some believers. <laughs> He's talking to believers. They are, they're not supposed to be non-believers in the church. So all of the stuff that Christians are out here telling everybody else that they need to be doing is what they need to be doing themselves. If you're not adhering to the word of God yourself, then you really are not supposed to be out here telling other people, you know, about it. Not on a, 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 a level, like you got these, uh, what did I call them? Um, the pulpit pimps, because that's what they are. They're pimping people out of their money. They're pimping people out of their money, and they are, are being given a status that they don't deserve, because they're not telling the people the truth about what is going on inside of, um, especially the Gospels. So, I am going off on a tangent because listening to this guy 
I'm torn. I am so torn and angry. Yet, I also understand why he thinks he's right. So he does have a measure of truth. It's just not as much as he thinks that it is. And like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's just very troubling. So when you go through and you look at a church like Sardis, he said to Sardis that there were still faithful. So you still have the faithful in Sardis that's going to walk with him, you know, in white. So I love the hope that is there, you know, that he leaves for us. He even leaves hope for Laodicea. Because if you go and you look at uh, Laodicea, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. That's an opportunity right there. That is the opportunity that that church, Laodicea, has. So he always, you know, leaves us with an opportunity, you know, for hope and for redemption. I love that. Um, and I really appreciate, you know, that word. Okay, so what else are we talking about with Sardis? So we talked about being watchful. We talked about remembering um, the, the, the word that they've been given and to hold fast and walk in it. And he said, he's going to come up on them like a thief in the night. Peter actually said that. I want to say it's in 1 Peter. Um, he was using it in, a, in a, a, an expounded context. But the day of the Lord, people are not going to be ready. That's what he's telling us. Like I said, look at Matthew 25 and the virgin. That's, that's the story. That's the story. And I was uh, recently, I was thinking about um, having a birthday party, you know, for myself. And it was going to, you know, be, you know, some work on my end. But um, I actually thought about it. And I'm like, I got a chance to be around some people uh, recently that I've known, you know, in the city. And it's just not worth the effort. It's not worth the effort to put together a party for people that I just don't feel like would really appreciate it anyway. And it, it really brings me back to when the Lord, the Lord killed the fatted calf, got the party stuff ready. He sent the servants out and said, hey, go tell everybody, you know, to come on, let's have a, you know. Let's get together. And then they said, well, I just got married. Oh, well, you know, I ain't, I'm not going to be able to make it. Oh, well, you know, this, that, and the other came up, so I'm not going to be able to make it. Oh, yeah, well, I'm not going to be able to make it. And he was like, okay, then go find me people that actually want to be in my presence. They actually appreciate, you know, this effort that I put out. And that's when the, the, they go to the highways and the byways and go and get the people, you know, to come in that... The people you would have expected to have his back didn't. And it's just, I'm real sad. I'm real sad about the state of, of humanity, you know, right now. After COVID, I really actually thought that people would be better. I don't know why I thought that, but I'm just telling you. And, um, yeah, I'm not finding that. Okay. So thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Praise the Lord. And this is the blessing. Okay, so he said that he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. That is the blessing, because in each of the churches, you got the blessing. And uh, Philadelphia is the only church that, that did not get admonished. So, um, again, this is not Christians. I know they thirsty, child. They really do want... Okay, so let's look at the blessings for the Philadelphia church. Him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. 
and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, with coming down out of the heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Wow. Wow. Yeah, um, I've, I really do have to pray about New Jerusalem. So, um, like I said, it would have to be, you know, a separate, you know, video. But the thing I love, too, about the um, Philadelphia church is that he said that he had the key of David. This is the Lord. He that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. That is profound. Because for me, where I am, I really am trying to use his word and his promises to help me coexist in this minutia, you know, that we're all stuck in, you know, here. And um, when I understand that the Lord has something for me and he's opened that door, there's not a joker breathing that can do anything to shut it. And that is part of the confidence that I use. Like, I, I, um, I went out the other evening, and that was part of my confidence, you know, that I am adopting that what's mine will be mine, and there won't, there's nobody that can take it, you know, away from me. So, my door, when it is open, is open. And... Vice versa. Any door that he shuts has to be respected as such. And I have learned, actually, you know how to do that. I'm learning. I, um, like I said, this is all that I have in order to try and help me make sense out of where we are. And so, it makes me happy when I'm actually able to find something <laughs> in the word that I can do. Like, I was just having a conversation um, about, like, some of the Christians, you know, that I know here. That I actually know that they know the Lord. They just don't, they don't want to be obedient, you know, to him. And he has taught me that I can't disrespect them. No matter how bad or jacked up they treat me, I still can't disrespect them. Because I understand that they know who he is. And... I get annoyed with them. I want to have words with these jokers often, but I don't because I've learned that lesson and I'm so thankful. I really am thankful. And when I'm around them, I treat them just like I would treat, you know, anyone else. Like I, I try to treat them, you know, with dignity and respect. And so um, it is a blessing when you can find, <laughs> when you can find something <laughs> In his word that you can actually do. It's so nice. It is so nice. Okay. So, um, he said, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. But thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast, den and hast not denied my name. And that takes me to Psalm 91. Let's go there. I was thinking about that too. Psalm 91. Where is it? My phone sticks. Like if I hit something, it takes a minute for it to um to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So where is it? Because he has set his love upon me. This is uh, Psalm 91, verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. So that, to me, was parallel to what we just read um, in Revelation about the Philadelphia you know, church. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. So let's go back to Revelation. 
Okay, Philadelphia. He's a good number out. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I wanted to. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. I actually really appreciate this. Okay. This is very important. And I have down here false religion. Okay. He said, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come up upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now, when I read that part, that takes me to Revelation 13 about the Antichrist. Because, you know, the stuff that we're looking at now with Trump and how you got Christians that are thirsty and hungry (laughs) to vote for this nut. And they don't see the sin in that. It's going to be the same way when the final Antichrist shows up. There are going to be people who should know better them to follow that joker and they're going to do it anyway it is going to if you think that this is madness it's going to be utter madness when that that final time you know comes and i think that is going to be just as shocking for people then as it is for us today you know, just like it was shocking for people who had to go through Hitler and, you know, all of that craziness. And just, it's just different pockets of history that are so horrific that the, the response is the same. You know, no matter what era, you know, it, it's happening, you know, in. I'm so disappointed in people who still can't tell the truth about Donald Trump. And will sit up and use Jesus as their defense for their behavior. It's disgusting. And it's actually one of the things that I agree with, with this older guy that I'm telling you about on this video. I agree with him with that. It is ridiculous. You think of, if you had a brain in your head, (laughs) it makes me wonder what is up there. What are they functioning off of? It's, a, it's just... So, he says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So that reminds me of Matthew, when the Lord tells the disciples, Don't uh, be fooled. Don't be fooled by men. Let me see. Where is he? No. This is at the beginning. This is it. So it's, it's Matthew 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. It is so important. That verse is so important because that's exactly what's happening, you know, right now. A lot of people think that when you hear that verse, they're stuck on the Antichrist. But it's not just the Antichrist, you know. That verse has more meaning, you know, than that. Because you got people today, the Pope, that joke is showing up in the name of Jesus. And he has, there is absolutely nothing about him. That is of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But people think that he has this high place in God's kingdom. And he's not even a part of God's kingdom. This is how insane it is to live on this planet. Okay. Okay. And so he's telling us. He's telling us not to be deceived by men. And deception by men is exactly what got us here in the first place. Christians, Christian men like to blame Eve <laughs> for what happened in the garden. But Adam knew the truth. If she didn't know, he knew. 
he knew that she shouldn't have took anything off of that tree and ate it. So when she gave it to him and he turned around and ate it, that that made it even worse. He should have dragged her in front of God and was like, hey, we got a problem. There is a problem. But he didn't do that. He partook of it with her. Completing the deception. Y'all sitting up lying to yourself. He knew what, what he was told. And he wasn't there to protect his wife. And now look at the mess that we are in. And they're still doing it. They're still doing it since they're deceiving us with these religious lies. And how many people are going to end up in hell? Because they don't understand God's word, but they want to be, um, they want to be lifted up and seen as experts in something that they're, that they are ignorant about. I'm telling you, it's hard for me to listen to Christians. So, um, when I'm putting these videos up, I would appreciate, you know, if you guys would, you know, check them out because I have to put some work in. This is not, it's not just me sitting here being, my ears being tickled. This is painful <laughs> for me to have to sit and listen to. But, you know, praise the Lord and whatever he tells me that I have to do, then that's what's going to get done. Okay, so this is the other thing since we're here in Matthew, I wanted to, to share. And I don't know if I'm going to be talking about this again, but since I'm here, I want to... um. To, to slip it in here. And it says. Number 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end. And then shall the end come. That. And if it, anybody has feedback. You know. I'm, I'm willing to you know hear. I get the two witnesses. So I guess when I talk about the two witnesses. Um. That I'll be coming back, you know, to that scripture. Because that's what it speaks to me. That's what matches up. That's what my brain, you know, tells me when I hear that scripture. And then I read, like I said, you know, about the two witnesses. So, okay. Let us go back to Revelation 3. Amen. Okay, let me see. Let me look at my notes right quick. I said, not blot out. Oh, okay. So, um... I did the Philadelphia. We said, no man take that crown. We just finished that one. The Key of David, we did that. We did that. New Jerusalem, new name. Hold fast, no man take. Okay, good. I got that one. We hadn't done Laodicea yet. Um, I did the watch. Okay. All right. So, let us go look at Philadelphia one more time. Amen. And... Where is it? With oh, okay, 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 okay. So it says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. He had okay. That's okay. So what I have written down here is without spot or blemish. Because that's the church that he's coming to look for. That's the church that he died on the cross for. Is the Philadelphia church. That steady group of people who lived and represented him in... Um, in the word, in the natural, and in the spirit. That's what's amazing about the Philadelphia church. Like I said, there was no admonishment for them. You go through all the rest of the churches, he's like, okay, I got a problem with you. Let us, ha let us sit down and discuss these issues <laughs> that I see going on up in this church. He didn't do that for the Philadelphia church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is, he got a plan. That's what it tells me. It tells me that he has a plan. 
So let me look up without spot or blemish because I want to put this in here too. All right, without spot or blemish. Spot or blemish. Okay. So it's in Ephesians 5. Yep. Let's go. That's interesting too because um, the guy, the, the older guy, he was in Ephesians. He was in Ephesians. He did Ephesians 2.13. So if y'all want to, you know, go read that before you listen to the video, you can do that. Five. Okay. Husband, this is, I'm starting at 25. Ephesians 5.25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and clean and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not ha not having spot nor wrinkle nor any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself all right that's it so when I read about the Philadelphia church, that's what comes, that's the scripture, you know, that comes to me. All right, I think I covered those. So let us talk about Laodicea. All right. Whew, Lord. So he says, I know that works. That thou art neither hot nor cold. He said, I'd rather that you were hot or cold. But the lukewarm, he will spew out of his mouth. And when I think about a lukewarm church, I think about fascism. Yeah, because that's what this country is. America's a fascist country. It's just got all the bells and whistles and all of the, the accoutrements <laughs> that is so good that you don't even know that you're living in a fascist, you know, state. And that's the, that is anti-Christ. We're supposed to be here feeding each other. We're supposed to be giving each other clothes. All this abundance that we have in this country, in America, we could feed and clothe everybody on the planet with as much stuff as we waste. And it's, it's ridiculous how consumer driven and greedy we've become. We've allowed ourselves to, to, to buy into this consumerism. And it's like a drug. You try to stop it. It's like um, I was on my other video because, you know, I'm doing Married at First Sight reviews. And I was talking about the environmentalism, you know, how you got liberals that are like, oh, yeah, we need to save the ocean. But then you tell them. Well, let's stop making paper. I mean, let's not let's stop making plastic straws. Those jokers, I hear people crying about these paper straws that we got in San Francisco all the time. They hate paper straws. But my thing is, because I use my container. So I'm not a straw person, you know, anyway. I, I kind of wean myself, you know, off of straws, but I, you can still get you can still get to the beverage. <laughs> I don't need the plastic straw in order for me to consume my beverage. So people are just stuck, you know, on a certain thing, you know. So your actions or the, even the way that you feel about it. I mean, you could use the paper straw, but you'd be mad about it. So the way that you feel doesn't align with what you say that you believe. If you believe that that giving up a plastic straw will benefit you know the planet and the ocean then everybody should be willing to do that <laughs> for the greater good this is how life continues but there's just this me this this anyway so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spew thee out of my mouth because thou sayest i am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So this 
takes me back to Matthew, you know, 25. Let us go there. Very important. Very important. Nope. I put the wrong book in there. I'm sorry. Matthew 25. He says, For I was and hungered, and ye gave me meat, and I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. This is the kind of stuff that we're supposed to be down here doing. In the name of Jesus. All of us. Not just a certain group, you know, of people. Every individual person down here is supposed to be working toward this goal. So just because you got, you know, you under a banner of a church, you as your own individual self need to be hooking up with this. So if you have an opportunity to do this for somebody on the street, if I see people out here working and picking up trash, I ask them, can I buy them, you know, some water? Because I appreciate, you know, what they're doing. You know, I'm not doing it just because that the Lord is telling me. I'm doing it because I really do appreciate them out there picking up that trash. I really do. But this is the kind of work that we have to do collectively and individually is my point. And, um... Yeah, so then look at what he said to the goats. Look at what he said. He said to the goat, let's see. Yes. Then he said also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was, hun- for I was in hunger. And ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty. And ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger. And ye took not me in. Took me not in. Naked. And ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison. And ye visited me not. And then they were like, okay. When do we do that? And he says. And he shall answer them saying, Verily I say unto you. In so much as ye did it not to one of the least of these. Ye did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And this is the thing about Laodicea. I mean, like I'm saying, I mean, San Francisco is a rich city. It's rich here. There shouldn't be any homelessness in this city. It's disturbing. It really is disturbing. So I'm able to see the scripture when I walk out of the front door or when I'm looking at YouTube, you know, videos like this dude, you know, I keep talking about. He doesn't even understand that he is Laodicea. He's so busy pointing his fingers at evangelicals that he's not even paying attention to his own failures. Because he got plenty of them. There is no violence in God's kingdom. If God wanted violence in his kingdom, he'd have left the devil and that third of the angels up there. <laughs> he would never have kicked them out. So you can't be more committed to fighting to even keep this country together. So if you think that being a patriot is picking up a musket, because, you know, he got the, the, the father's the church fathers, the white church fathers that he wants to talk about, the slaveholding fathers that he's telling people that they need to emulate. See, this is why white Christians get on my nerves because if you're trying to hold on to a history that doesn't hold up, there is no church father back then that was, that was worth his salt if he was a slaveholding church father. If he went along, if, he, if he, you go along to get along, there's so many white Christians that did that that turned their faces to this inhumane mess for centuries so they could go along and get along. So this is the kind of stuff I think about too when I hear this ignorance coming out of his mouth. So I'm, it's hard. It's hard. I don't know how much of this video I'm going to be able to finish, you know, um, 
when I go and 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 listen to it. But we'll see. We'll pray. Pray for me. Pray for me. Listen to a Christian child. Lord have mercy. Where am I? Okay, so Laodicea, hot, cold, lukewarm. Okay, so we went over to lukewarm. We went over to lukewarm where um, you, you just sit there and see people need food on the street. You got food that you'll throw away before you give it to the person that you see on the street. You got $5 that you know that you can go and get five more dollars quicker than this joker can. But you want to hold on to it. That $5 is so important. But it might help this, this person get something to drink. Or might help them be able to get something to eat. That might be the only meal that they have that day. And you were able, you know, to do that. These are the kind of things that we need to start doing for each other. In order for us to have a better, not just country, but world. The Lord is serious. He's not the go. I'm telling you. Listen to what he said to Laodicea. He's not joking. Listen to what he said in Matthew 25 to the sheep and the goats. He told the goats. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Ever, he's not joking. People think Jesus is playing. And this is, what did he say? Um, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He says that in a few places, you know, too. And people, they just, they go blind. They go blind when it's, um, when it's being told. So, it's just very painful having to understand this. And it's lonely. It's lonely. It's lonely. It says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I love that because I often say that he, he keeps his foot implanted in my backside. And I need that. I, need, I can see myself fading and, and, and trying to, to get caught up in a, in, a, in, a, in a race that's not mine to run. And he showed me that about myself recently. And I actually really appreciate him. I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me that, you know, because... It's hard. It really is hard to follow the Lord, especially when you don't have no help. So I always appreciate, you know, when the Holy Spirit jump in and 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 give me some firmness. <laughs> I need it. And so praise the Lord. And we talked about um, the invitation and the opportunity that he gives us, the hope that we can always turn to him. He said to what? Seek and you shall find. Seek and you shall find me. So that's what I get, you know, um, from that. He said, Behold, and stand, I, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and him with and he with me. So um, it's that I see my relationship with the Lord as like a, a circle, you know. We... He feeds me, and that sustenance gives me encouragement to be obedient to him. So it's, it's that will for me. And um, I just really appreciate him. I'm going to go. I'm going to listen to this. And um, anything I need to add, I will do that. But I'm going to finish later to see you with the... Um, with the reward. With the reward. He said to them that overcometh. I will grant to sit with me. In my throne. Even as I also overcame. And am set down with my father. In his throne. When I hear Christians say. And call themselves Gentiles. That is. Um, that takes my mind to a level of of understanding that I see that they don't have. You start out as a Gentile. Once you have been grafted in, you are no longer a Gentile. You don't get any points for calling yourself a Gentile. When you're grafted in to the vine, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. 
So once you become a branch, you are now part of Israel, of greater Israel. You're no longer a Gentile. You're a citizen of Israel. So I don't know. It's, um, it's painful, man. It's painful. And so when we look at the word overcome, this is uh, really important because in Matthew 4, that is when the Lord was in the wilderness and he was tempted by the devil. Let's go to Matthew 4. Yep, he went into the wilderness. So, that was a measure of him overcoming. The other um, um, measure that I understand of when he's saying he overcame is when he actually got on the cross. Because you remember he went to uh, Gethsemane and he was praying to the Father that if it was possible for the cup to be taken away from him, to please take the cup away. But he said, if this is the cup that I got to drink out of, then okay, then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do that. He was obedient to the Father even up until death. You know, where it's horrific. You got to stand there and be judged by people that don't even know what you're trying to do. And they're going to let a, a crook, a criminal, a, a murderer like Barabbas, they set him free. And then they put Jesus to death. And he running around feeding people and, and, and bringing people back to life and, and giving people eyesight and helping them walk. And he's the one that they wanted to, to crucify. And it's the same thing that's going on today. That's, I, I'm, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. So, with all of it, with all of the churches the Lord has here, that he who has an ear, let him hear what he's saying to the churches. He's saying this in Revelation 2, and he's saying it in Revelation you know, 3. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And that is the Holy Spirit, our teacher and our guide. And um, I'm going to leave it here. And like I said, I'm going to go back and listen to it. And if I need to do another Revelation 3 video, I will. Praise Him. And so the next one is going to be the... Um, I, I'm not sure which one of them I'm going to do. But... Look up, look out, you know, for the, the videos that I've, I've been talking about. All right, you guys, anybody who hung in there with me, it's an, almost an hour. Praise the Lord. I would thank anyone who will pray for me. And um, until the next video.